Thanks for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear? Yeah. I think the mic list was there. Uh, <clears throat> so, in addition to uh, what he gave us an introduction, I'm also a Prometheus team member. Uh, and I maintain the Prometheus TSDB upstream. So, that's why I'm speaking about it here. Uh, uh, before we go into the TSDB, what is Prometheus? Prometheus is a metric based monitoring and alerting stack. You can instrument your application or run exporters, which will expose the metrics that you want to monitor. And Prometheus scrape, collect those metrics for you, store it inside, let you alert uh, based on conditions. So it's a whole monitoring stack. And uh, talking about the time series itself, it has an identifier. In Prometheus, it's a, it's just a set of label names and label values, uh, like a pair of uh, strings, you can say, a slice of pair of strings. The HTTP request total here is an example where the metric is tracking the total number of HTTP requests done for this particular uh, job. And that's uh, that one is a special uh, label name which has a custom label name and that's just a value. Along with an identifier, time series is just a stream of samples. Here, a sample is a tuple of timestamp and a value. We use Unix timestamp and the value can be a float. And that's the uh, basis of a time series which we are going to store in the TSTB right now. So Prometheus is huge, it does a lot of things, uh, but we are only going to focus on the time series database, which is inside Prometheus in the middle, how it stores the data in its raw form and just makes it available for queries. Uh, so we are not going to worry about anything else that Prometheus does. So here there is a TSTB and the sample that we are going to talk is the timestamp is a 64 bit integer, which uh, in Prometheus we store the milliseconds as integers because we found that's kind of enough for most of the use cases. And in case of value, it's a float 64 value. So Prometheus right now supports more than float 64 uh, uh, custom data structure to store high resolution histograms. But for the sake of this talk, we are only going to talk about uh, sample having a uh, 64 bit integer and a 64 bit float value. So let's, before diving into how it stores inside TSDB, uh, it's, we can look at the overview. So there is a component called head block. Uh, it's a component which stores the index of the recent data in the memory and uh, recent data in the memory and some things memory map. We will see how it works in a moment. So this is the component that first gets the data in the TSDB. And after the head has stored data for some time, we create persistent blocks, uh, immutable blocks, which you can store for long term and uh, do queries on it. So we are going to go inside this block itself and how they are created. So let's first look at writing a sample inside the head block. So here is the head block. There is nothing inside right now. And we get one sample and we create an index entry for this particular set of labels for the time series. Uh, chunk is a compressed set of samples. We call it a chunk. In uh, Prometheus, we use something called Gorilla Compression by Facebook. And every time you get a sample, you compress it in flight and store it, uh, store it there instead of storing the raw samples. But before we put sample into the TSDB, uh, we have first created the series entry in the index, and then we write into something called write ahead log. We'll see why it's required right now. Once we write it into the write ahead log, like log that this write has come to the TSDB, we then write it inside the TSTB in a compressed fashion. And inside the right ahead log, if it's the first sample, we store the labels of a series and series gets an ID, let's say ID1. And we write another record which says the sample is T1, V1 for ID1. Uh, yeah, it's the right ahead log, it just logs every write that comes to the TSTB. So we need right ahead log for durability. Just imagine you did a write request to the TSTB. Uh, and the system kind of crashed right now. Or you uh, said uh, to the upper layer that, okay, this write was successful. Uh, but if the system uh, currently crashes, all the data is in the memory, how you produce it back. So we use write ahead log to uh, replay the events that happened as is in the writes and recreate the in-memory data structure that we had before the crash or even during restart. And we get another sample. We write it to the write ahead log and then the chunk. 
and inside the right header log now you see we don't write, write a series record because we have already written a series record and you pass through it from start to end. So we just say for ID one we got another sample. Yeah, that's about uh, the first step of adding samples in the Prometheus. So let's say you added more samples and it got full right now. Like uh, you have to cut the chunk somewhere. You can't just keep on growing the chunk. Uh, what we do here is once a chunk is full, uh, in our case we take it as 120 samples, but we are currently trying to cap it at a certain size as well. We just memory map it into something called head chunks. Head chunks are just a bunch of files where you have this compressed chunk and just the reference of, the, of that particular chunk, like where it's on the file uh, in the memory. So you're not storing the compressed chunk in the memory. You just, you are just holding a eight byte reference. And whenever you want to fetch this series, we just take the reference, fetch it from the disk and then query on it. This way it uh, saves memory for during majority of the time when you don't need to query that data. And the same process repeats, you get more data, more chunk gets filled. Okay, now you have a lot of data in Prometheus. Uh, how do you take care of it? Now we create something called persistent blocks out of the data that's present in the head block right now. Uh, uh, we need to do that uh, to make queries and a lot of things efficient. Uh, so this process is called a head compaction, where we take the data from the memory map chunks which are on the disk and also some data in the memory if it falls within some logic that Prometheus decides, okay, we want to compact data from this time range to this time range and just create a block. And the same process repeats, we create another block. Uh, the earliest block I'm name, numbering it N, the new block is N plus one. It's like a linear set of blocks that uh, come into the TSTP. Okay, but why do we need compaction? So uh, time series are not always the same. After some time, you may be ingesting data into a new set of time series. So you don't want to hold index record of that in your memory. So once you compact and put the flush the data onto the disk, you have those uh, uh, index entries from the ends free up space. Also, you are holding the chunk references in the memory. That also gets cleaned up. And restarts will also be faster because now you have to replay less set of events to create the in-memory uh, structure. Okay, so what about the bigger block? If you notice in the diagram, I have the n minus two block as something a uh, large block. It's uh, we create it from the smaller blocks that we just created. So imagine you have four blocks A, B, C, and D. So based on some logic, we choose three blocks at a time and just merge them to create a bigger block. We'll see why it's required soon. Like every block has its own index and we are going to look into the index soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. block compaction is for efficient uh, queries. It also reduces the disk space usage because the index is not repeated and we'll see soon how. Yeah, so before we look at the block, at some point you want to get rid of the old data. You don't want to store the data in your system because sometimes you don't need the old time series data. So you can configure TSTB uh, to uh, have retention based on the disk space usage and also uh, how much time range your data is covering. Uh, so this is an example of time-based retention. Uh, if we consider this as some kind of number line, uh, every data which is beyond the red line, we have to delete it. But if a block overlaps, we can't pass immutable. We have to delete a whole block together. So once we add more data and create more blocks and the block goes outside the retention range, it is just simply deleted. Like there is no waiting. As soon as new blocks come up, the old blocks goes outside the retention range. The data block is just removed from the system. Okay. So this is at a high level how TSTB works. Let's dive a little deeper into, into a block. So inside the persistent block, which is created out of a head block, it contains an index, which maps all the data that's present in the block. It has a meta telling all the uh, important information about the block, uh, which will let you decide how to and when to query it. Tombstones for deletion, we'll come to it soon, why we need tombstones and why can't we delete the data from block immediately. And there is the chunks themselves. So we store all the chunks together in a bunch of files, all the compressed samples. Uh, chunks are compressed unit of samples. So let's look at all of them one by one. Starting with a meta file. 
in the meta file like every block has an identifier which is called universal identifier and block stores uh, data from a particular min time to particular max time so if you look at the meta you know what's the time range this block is covering few health information like how many series how many chunks and if the block was created from other blocks we also store the parent blocks for debugging uh, purposes okay now let's look at the chunk files themselves this is pretty simple it has a, a list of files every file is capped at 512 mb and in every file we just store the uh, store the compressed chunks as is because all of this reference is mapped inside the index and uh, the reference is stored in a very simple manner so we have a 8 byte reference for every chunk the first four bytes stores the file number in which the chunk exists and the last four byte uh, stores the byte offset in the particular file where the chunk exists so if you if i give you a 8 byte reference the, with the first four bytes you'll tell which you want and you will take this uh, last four bytes and just uh, seek your file to that byte offset and there you have the chunk the chunk has uh, helpful meta informations to know how much to read at time so this is a simple way how chunks are stored on the disk the most interesting part is the index uh, Prometheus stores index in something called an inverted index format and see we'll see how it's stored and how it's queried both so at a high level the index has four components first is the symbol table the symbol table stores all the symbols basically the strings that were seen in a time series uh, so uh, the symbols are like if you had label name HTTP request total that is a symbol job equals to nginx then job is a symbol nginx is a symbol so all the symbols are stored together in a single table because if you repeat all the symbols in the index everywhere it just takes a lot of space so you just store it in a table in a sorted fashion and just use index the first symbol is number one the second symbol is number two and just use those numbers everywhere in the index so whenever you have to get get the actual symbol you look up this table so so this is the purpose of symbol table and now the series itself so it stores uh, uh, the labels that pertain to this particular series instead of storing the uh, uh, string itself it uses the symbol table index right now to store which labels uh, are for this particular series and then a slice of chunk references we saw earlier that chunk reference is just a 8 byte number but with every chunk we store what's the main time of the chunk what's the max time of the chunk and what's the encoding of the chunk so that we know how to decode the chunk and the series are uh, stored in a sorted fashion based on their label values like sort first based on the first label name and value then the second label name and value and so on so uh, if you take s1 and s3 we know that if we sort it again s3 is gonna come after s2 and s1 so this is how series is stored these are just simple plain information that's stored in the index now we come to the in interesting part so in inverted index uh, uh, world uh, the postings are nothing but the series okay i skipped one part here so every series has a reference s1 s2 s3 that i'm mentioning here so those are again byte offset in the index so if i give you a series reference called s1 you just uh, take a offset in the file uh, with s1 and there you get the series in uh, prometheus we align it to 16 bytes so a reference is actual byte offset divided by 16 and if i give you a reference you just multiply it by 16 and get the byte offset and you directly go to the series where it exists and postings are nothing but uh, those uh, series ids so postings are series ids and we store a list of posting list we'll come to uh, it in a second why we are storing a list but this particular section stores a list of those series ids and the reference pl1 pl2 is again the byte offset in the file uh, I'll come back to this again after looking at the next stuff. So there is posting offset table. This is the important part. So you saw uh, every series has a set of label name and label value pair. Uh, and when in this posting offset table, uh, we store like, okay, foo1 equals to bar1 is present in a set of series, which is represented by the posting list one. And foo1 equals to bar2 is present in this particular set of series. So this is how we store the inverted index for every label value, uh, label name and label value pair. We store what are the set of series that correspond to this. Uh, so uh, this just points to a posting list 
uh, as a reference and based on PL1, PL2, PL3, we can look at this table to act actual set of series that are for this label name and label value. So now we will see how we use the index to query. So let's say now I want to query in Prometheus fashion, this should fetch series that has both the labels, foo1 equals to bar1, foo2 equals to bar3. So we take one matcher at a time. Let's see, uh, we take the, we look at foo1 equals to bar1 and foo1 equals to bar2 against the posting of the table. Okay, now we know it matches a particular set of posting list. Now we have the reference where the posting list exists. Now we take the reference, look at the postings table and we get the set of series references that actually match these label values. And now that we have two sets of series, uh, uh, like series references, you just intersect them and finally you, now you know that this uh, series uh, mentioned by the reference C S6 and S22 matches the query that you gave. This is a simple query that you can do on TSDB. Uh, and now you have S6 and S22. You just take those references again and look at the series table and now you get the series. And uh, the series now tells you what are the chunk references that you have. And then you can just fetch the chunks and do the query on that. And uh, depending on the time range that you have queried, let's say you have queried from T1 to T2, you just trim the chunks when giving back to the API caller. Um, I'll go back to this diagram again. So in short, we started at posting of, when querying, we started at posting of the table with that information went to the postings, from there we went to the series and we finally got the data. Okay, so when you have to, this is about querying a single block, like the index is uh, concentrated on a single block. When you have to query multiple blocks, you do individual queries to each block. Even the head gi block gives the same interface of giving the label name and label values and get the samples and series pertaining to it. So there is a uh, there is just an implementation called querier which queries each individual blocks and then merges the data together. Yeah. So this is where the big block comes in to help. If you have less blocks, big blocks, look up less number of blocks to get the same data. And because the index series, because sometimes series stay for a long period, you again deduplicate these entries. So that's the use of having a bigger block. And it's not just the equal <coughs> matcher that uh, case to be used, you can also do not equals to, or you can match a regex, or you can say if it does not match a regex, just give me these results. Yeah. So finally we come to the tombstones. Uh, tombstones are uh, there to record uh, the deletions that you make on a block. Uh, because the blocks are immutable, if you have to delete a data and series, you have to recalculate the entire index because all the offset and everything is calculated based on the byte offset. So that is very inefficient. So when you get a deletion request, you see which series it affects and what's the time range the deletion is asked for. And you just record it in a file called tombstones, which just says for this series reference, this time range is deleted and so on. This is usually small, so we don't really optimize stuff here. And whenever you're querying, uh, when you are looking at the chunks, you also cross verify with tombstones and only return the data that uh, does not overlap with these tombstones. Yeah. Uh, so we have like six minutes, so I'll quickly cover a couple more things. Uh, we talked about head chunks uh, that we maintain in the in-memory database part. We have to see how we replay it on startup. And there is another artifact called a snapshot on shutdown, uh, which kind of helps in this replay. We will see in a moment. So when we are replaying the data, uh, you first replay all the head chunks, basically the compressed chunks that you have uh, on the disk. And once you have that, you replay the right head log. Like in, when you are replaying the right head log, uh, decompressing the right head log takes roughly half of the time. And then actually ingesting into the TSDB takes roughly half of the time. The help of the uh, memory map head chunks, uh, we can discard samples which already exist in the compressed chunks. So that saves quite a bit of time. But still replaying a right head log is a little slow. So there comes 
a snapshot on shutdown where everything that is that you have to replay uh, on a startup when you're shutting down gracefully you just take a snapshot of that you take snapshot of all the series that exist instead of taking it from the right head log records and then take the snapshot of the in memory chunk which has not been flushed to the disk uh, in which case you don't have to go to the right head log uh, you can simply skip the right head log just replay the head chunks and snapshot this way you can speed up the replay and uh, there are uh, co another component called right behind log which is used for out of order ingestion of samples the uh, process that i showed right now every sample has to have a timestamp greater than the previous sample for the particular time series for the compression to work well uh, so there is for out of order ingestion we have another artifact but because of time crunch we are also not discussing that yeah. and this was a very brief introduction uh, in 25 minutes you can only explain so much so i have a whole seven part blog, blog post which explains everything in detail so if you want a link to slides you can scan the first one if you want the link to the blog post you can scan the second one thank you so we have 4 minutes for q and do we have questions for him wow that was a very, was very, clear very very sleek no but I, I was quite intrigued i have never seen actually tsdb uh, structure before head logs which is a very common idea right i would like to add one more thing like uh, this tsdb block is not just used by prometheus there are projects like thanos cortex and mimir which are distributed uh, time series database uh, built as an extension to prometheus for long term storage they use this specific uh, blo block format uh, to store their data like they literally use the tsdb code it's open source it's go code they literally use this code to create the same kind of blocks and they have some kind of super power in the sense that uh, the blocks are distributed in prometheus it's all on a single machine hmm. in memir cortex thanos it's distributed so you can uh, the when querying multiple blocks you can just run a query on a separate machine and that way you can speed up the queries so this tsdb block format is used by multiple popular uh, distributed database as well 